When she had that experience with the mammography and, and I came home and she told me about it, she was, she was upset and, you know, it sounded like an awful experience and not one that anyone would want to have. And that isn't the first time that sort of thing has happened. If you talk with any anyone who has disability, whether it's physical or cognitive or mental health, given enough time, you'll hear these kinds of stories. This is not an uncommon problem. It results in healthcare disparities, which are quite significant. If people are going to live good quality, successful lives in the community, even people with very complex disabilities, we're going to need to change how we deliver health care. Hey, Crispy. Where do you want it? On the table. Okay. Good. So I also have CP. Our disabilities are kind of opposite. Like, you you want to be you want to be on the ground, and I have trouble getting down to ground level sometimes. You want to be up high, and I want to be up high. Yeah. How are things going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna check your blood pressure first, and you can tell me what brings you in today. Okay. <laughs> So let me try starting with the spine. Any pain there? Okay. I feel How many hours are you in the chair during the day? I'm not in the chair all day. I get out and I hope. Okay. I would say that it's a learning process. I did make an assumption that Melissa was basically in her chair all day. And a couple of visits ago, she actually told me, no, I'm not, and I was surprised. And so it's not like I have her walking around in the room or you know, getting outside of the chair. And so for me, that was a learning moment. It was like, oh, next time I should ask the question, you know, in terms of how you spend your day, how much of it is in the chair versus ambulating. So part of it is just letting go of assumptions and finding out what's really going on. Hi, Melissa. My name is Ryan Delgado. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me over here. I'm looking at my health as I can. I think it's good for my groups because they get real life exposure and they see all kinds of different environments. In your opinion, what is the biggest thing that I should know? If that is them to the whole picture of who I am, it impacts the way they see me and the way they might find us a problem. The goal of healthcare is for people to be able to participate, to be well, not just free of disease, but to be healthy and to do the things that they want to do. When I'm dreaming about the future, I want people with disabilities and families and supports to have higher expectations for what's going to happen. I'm hopeful that doctors will be allies to us. Well, the office staff will be trained and, mm -hmm. and not, not sort of see you differently. 
Not patronize me. Not patronize you. The appointments will be long enough that you can get your words out. And the work was my Bible hostess. It may be like the atypical system. It may be an atypical system. So the standard rules may not apply. But you still need it to work for you. We can do we can do it all in a better way, in a more efficient way, one that recognizes these human rights that we all have and yet we're not really seeing fully fulfilled.